Hey everybody, it's Amber. I hope you're doing well. Today I want to do a short video to kind of do like an intro to meal planning sort of thing. This is going to allow you to be able to go ahead and start doing Trim Healthy Mama even before you have finished reading this monster of a book. And it's really not that bad because half of it is recipes. So you really just need to get through about the first half or so to be able to really understand the program, how to use it, how to eat, that sort of thing. But it is possible to go ahead, you know, once you have the book, let's say you're a chapter or so in, and I know you're really excited to get going with it because that's how I was, but to be able to go ahead and start using the information even before you've read everything. So I wanna go over that and hopefully this will make sense to you. So if I could give anybody a piece of information that was one of the key things that led to my success over this past year, that would be menu planning. Um, because if you don't have a plan for what you're gonna eat and have your kitchen stocked with the necessary ingredients to make those meals, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get really hungry and you're gonna just go and find whatever it is. You may end up eating sandwiches on regular bread, bowls of cereal, that sort of thing that is definitely not on plan and not conducive to losing weight. So what I did was I went and I found a like a template that I would print it out and I'm gonna try to find the link to this and put it in the description box below so that you can print this out. You can make your own if you want. You can just jot all this down on paper. But I found this particular one to be really helpful as far as um, having all the blocks, everything. You've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks. You even have a little box right here where you note whether it's an E or an S. Um, and then you can write your grocery list on this side if you want. I always um, just use that to put desserts and stuff over there and I wrote my grocery list on a whole separate paper But you also if you will keep your menu plans from each week you can recycle them um, so anyway um, And by recycle them I mean like I have this whole stack and so if I get bored or lazy and I don't want to sit down one week and make out a menu plan I can just go back and pick one of these um, make out a correlating grocery list and I'm good to go so the main thing that you need to know to be able to start menu planning is that meals are divided up primarily into an S, which stands for satisfying, those are going to have more fat, or an E, that's energizing, you've got more carbs, but you're healthy carbs, not carbs like white bread or white rice or white potatoes that's going to just skyrocket your blood sugar. Um, so that would be an example of that is like a bowl of oatmeal for breakfast. So you've got your S meals and you've got your E meals. If you want to get more detailed into it, then you've got your fuel pools, which really don't have enough fat or carbs to be classified as either one. But for the purposes of a beginner menu plan, we're not going to get crazy and go into that. So when you have the book, what you need to do to start with is just get one of your empty menu plan sheets. And like I said, I'm going to do my best to find a link to put that below so you can print it out. Now what I did with my book, as you can see, and it is, I mean, this is a mess. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. You can get those little um, divider tabs like you use it in school um, and stick those to the page in here and then your sticky notes wouldn't look so bad. But this is what I had and this is what I did. So what I always do is I sit down and I start with breakfast. So one of your chapters in here, it's chapter number 18, is morning meals. So I turn to morning meals in the book and I've got my empty sheet here, pretend this is empty, and I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna pick breakfast. Now, it doesn't matter. When you read through the book, you'll read about, you know, freestyling, which is just basically, you know, there's no set rule. Nothing says you have to eat, you know, this X number of S meals a day or a week or X number of E meals a day or a week. Um, and so just do what works for you. Play around with it. You know, there may be a combination that leads to better weight loss for you, but it's going to be individualized and you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. Now, a lot of times what I would do with my breakfast, um, and especially when I started, I was really enjoying oatmeal. You want to get the old-fashioned oatmeal, not the quick oatmeal. The book will talk about this because the old-fashioned oats will um, not spike your blood sugar as quickly as like the, the um, 
quick oats because just of the processing, it, it hits your blood sugar faster anyway. So what I would do a lot of times in the morning was eat a bowl of oatmeal with some blueberries in there, and that would be an e-breakfast. Um, so anyway, just go through your morning meal section and, and look for look for dishes that sound good to you. Um, if there's, you know, like if, if you like scrambled eggs and bacon, write that down. That's going to be an S. So just go through and write down all your bread. Also, if you notice that I have written down the page numbers where the recipes can be found and whether they're an E or an S, write that down too. That way, when you go to make that meal, you know exactly what page the recipe is on and you know whether it's an E or an S or not, and then you don't waste time looking for things. So go through each day of the week and write down the breakfast that you're gonna eat. And then go back and do the same exact thing for lunch. Lunches in this book are chapter, they are in chapter 20. And a lot of times what I would do for lunch is like when I'm looking back, this is an old one that I did. Um, I had quesadillas one day for lunch. Um, the warm chicken sandwich, which is on page 298, and I use um, sprouted bread for that. Lettuce wraps, an egg salad sandwich, um, loaded potato soup, which is really good. It's made with cauliflower. Um, so I just did a lot of really quick and easy things for lunch because um, I stay at home, but I don't like to spend a whole lot of time cooking. If I'm, I only really like to cook one meal a day, and that's at night. So breakfast and lunches for me are usually pretty quick. Um, now I will say, as far as choosing E's or S's, what I found that I really liked, especially in the beginning, I ate about 50-50 as far as the breakfast went. So like one day I might eat an E, the next day it might be an S. It would just, you know, depend on what I wanted to do. My sandwich, or not my sandwiches, my lunches most of the time, um, it looks like, especially on this week, let's see, that's an S, E, E, S. I kind of flip-flopped those two, but my dinners tend to be just about 100% of the time S's because your S meals contain more fat and they're going to be more satisfying. So I didn't want to be hungry, feel like I was hungry before bed. So I would, I eat mostly S dinners at nighttime. So do... For your lunches, do just like you did with the breakfast. Go through there, um, go through chapter 20, and find different lunch ideas that sound good to you, and write those down in each section. Um, also noting the page number and whether or not it's an E or an S. Just find what you like. Um, I've made a lot of the recipes in this book and have loved every one of them except for one. And I cannot remember what that was. I apologize. If I run across it, I'll let you know. But um, so anyway, yeah, you're going to do that for your lunches. And you're going to do the exact same thing again for your evening meals. Now, when you first start to menu plan, it's going to take you a little while because you're going to be looking through this cookbook and looking at different recipes. And you have no idea what you're going to like, what you're you know, what's going to appeal to you. I was really surprised when we started going through this plan that everyone in my family really loved all the recipes I made. So um, over time, I gained confidence that, you know, I would, everybody's going to like what I'm cooking. So I didn't worry about that so much. But in the beginning, sometimes it would take an hour or two to get this menu plan done. So don't be surprised if it's a lengthy process. So just go through the um, the evening meals section. That is um, chapter 21. Go through the evening meal section and do the same thing again for all your dinners. Find what appeals to you, write it down, put the page numbers and whether or not it's an E or an S. So when you're doing breakfast, lunches, and dinners, if you haven't gotten this far in the book, they always recommend about three hours between um, meals or snacks or anything, three hours between when you eat. So if you were to eat an E breakfast and you ate, wait three hours, then you could eat an S if you wanted to. Um, you just don't want to be eating much more closely, I think, than about every two and a half hours or so. That's, I don't remember exactly. I need to reread that part in the book. But if you leave two and a half to three hours between times when you're eating, you're going to be fine because that gives your body enough time to burn through what you've eaten and also start burning some body fat before you start going and putting 
more food in there for it to have to deal with. So I hope that makes sense. So once you have all your breakfasts, your lunches, and your dinners written down for the whole week, um, go through and look through the dessert and the snack section as well and find some things on there that you want to try out because it is very important that you have some desserts and that you have snacks. I will tell you a couple of things that I really like. I'm just going to flip through the dessert section. Um, on page 366, the choco pudding, I've made that. It's really good. And most of these recipes in here have... Um, you can make it whether an S, an E, or a fuel pool depending on what you put in it. And once you read the recipe, you'll kind of understand that. Um, let's see what else I've made in here. The skinny chocolate, if you like chocolate, definitely make that. That is a staple. If you will keep that in your freezer, anytime you have a sweet tooth or a chocolate attack, and that's on page 371, that will take care of that. Um, if you use extra virgin coconut oil in that recipe, what you end up with is a healthy taste, something that tastes like a healthy, um, like mounds, you know, the, the coconut and the chocolate candy bar. It tastes like that. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, the basic cheesecake on 373 is really good. My husband um, really enjoys that because he loves cheesecake. Let's see what else have I made. Peanut squares, maybe that's the one that wasn't my cup of tea um, on page 377, but my um, my kids liked that one pretty good. The Cottage Berry Whip on 379 is really easy, and it's really good for a dessert. Let's see what else. The Special Agent Brownie Cake on 382 we've really liked. And off the top of my head, that's... Those have been our favorite in that section. Um, if you go back to, there's a section in the book called Muffins, Breads, and Pizza Crusts, chapter number 19. This one has um, a muffin in a mug on page 256, the chocolate version. I love that. Um, and it takes about a minute to make, maybe two with mixing the ingredients. And um, then you feel like you're eating a cupcake. So I'll make that a lot of times at night. Like if I want something um, after dinner but before bed, I'll make that. And that's really good. So those are just some ideas on, um, on different desserts. Because, you know, when you're doing this, you don't want to feel like you can't have anything sweet. Because you absolutely can. But it's important to menu plan and have all of that written down for you so you have a plan as you go through the week. Now, if you work outside of the home and you need to pack lunches, that's going to be a completely different topic and one that I may need to get somebody's help on um, in our group here that has to do that because I don't work outside of the home so I don't have any experience with that. I could give suggestions as far as like sandwiches and wraps that would transport easily. But still, whether you're at home all day or you're not, it's important to have a menu plan to be able to know what you're doing. So hopefully, although this will take longer and it will seem confusing if you haven't finished reading the book, it is something that I think you can do even before you finish um, going through the book for the first time. If you have any questions, absolutely post them in the comment section below. And do not be disheartened if your first menu planning takes much longer than expected. Um, like I said, when I first started sitting down to do this, it took me between one and two hours to get it done. Um, it may not take you that long. I don't know. Maybe I'm just slow. But anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that helps you to be able to understand how to go ahead and start putting this um, into effect in your life before you have a chance to go through the book. Because I know everybody's so busy and, um, you know, and you read at different speeds too. So, I'm going to stop rambling. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions about menu planning, whether in the comment section below or on the Facebook page. So I will talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.